Genesis predominantly consists of narratives, forming an anthology of stories that largely follow the hero story archetype. As the title suggests, Book of Beginnings, Genesis encompasses foundational principles spanning from the creation of the world and humanity to the history of God's covenant with humanity. The book covers the origin of the universe, the emergence of human beings, the advent of sin, and the unfolding of God's plan to redeem and bless humanity through a chosen people. While the book features a diverse cast of characters, eight figures stand out, Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Adam and Eve are central to the creation narrative, representing the first humans created by God. Their story includes the formation of Adam from dust, the creation of Eve from Adam's rib, their life in the Garden of Eden, and the tragic fall from grace after disobeying God's command by eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This act introduces sin and mortality into the world, fundamentally altering the human condition. Noah, a righteous man in a corrupt world, is chosen by God to survive a great flood intended to cleanse the earth of its widespread wickedness. Noah's story is marked by his unwavering faith and obedience as he builds an ark to save his family and pairs of every animal species. The flood narrative emphasizes themes of judgment and redemption, culminating in God's covenant with Noah, symbolized by the rainbow, promising never to destroy the earth by flood again. Abraham and Sarah are pivotal figures in the genesis of the Hebrew people. Abraham, originally named Abram, is called by God to leave his homeland and journey to a new land where he will become the father of a great nation. Despite their advanced age and Sarah's initial barrenness, God promises them a son, Isaac, through whom the covenant will continue. Their story highlights themes of faith, covenant, and the testing of obedience, as seen in the near sacrifice of Isaac. Isaac, the son of Abraham and Sarah, plays a crucial role in maintaining the covenant lineage. His story includes the miraculous nature of his birth, his near sacrifice by Abraham, and his marriage to Rebekah, who becomes the mother of Esau and Jacob. Isaac's life is relatively less eventful, but his role as a patriarch is vital in the continuity of the covenant promises. Jacob, later named Israel, is a complex and transformative figure whose life story is rich with struggle, deception, and ultimate redemption. He is known for his rivalry with his twin brother Esau, his manipulation to receive Isaac's blessing, and his vision of a ladder reaching to heaven, symbolizing God's connection with humanity. Jacob's story includes his marriages to Leah and Rachel, the birth of his twelve sons who become the progenitors of the twelve tribes of Israel, and his wrestling with God, after which he is renamed Israel. Joseph, one of Jacob's twelve sons, is renowned for his technicolor coat and his journey from being sold into slavery by his jealous brothers to becoming a powerful leader in Egypt. Joseph's narrative is a story of perseverance, forgiveness, and divine providence. Despite suffering betrayal and imprisonment, Joseph rises to prominence by interpreting Pharaoh's dreams and implementing a plan to save Egypt from famine. His eventual reconciliation with his brothers underscores themes of forgiveness and God's sovereignty in guiding history for a greater good. These eight figures encapsulate the essence of Genesis, illustrating the themes of creation, sin, judgment, covenant, faith, and redemption that underpin the theological and moral framework of the book. Exodus revolves around the central theme announced in its title, the liberation of the Israelites from Egyptian oppression, their arduous journey through the desert, and their eventual arrival at the threshold of the Promised Land. The book is a rich tapestry woven from three distinct genres, narrative, chapters 1 to 18 and 32 to 34, lawgiving, chapters 19 to 24, and detailed architectural instructions for the construction of the tabernacle, chapters 24 to 31 and 35 to 40. Each Nunra emphasizes different critical aspects of the Israelites' journey, deliverance, covenant, and holiness, respectively. In the narrative sections, chapters 1 to 18 and 32 to 34, the story begins with the Israelites' enslavement in Egypt and follows Moses' miraculous survival as an infant, his upbringing in Pharaoh's palace, and his subsequent exile after killing an Egyptian taskmaster. God calls Moses from the burning bush, commanding him to lead his people out of bondage. The narrative vividly describes the ten plagues that God inflicts upon Egypt, culminating in the Passover, where the firstborn of Egypt are struck down while the Israelites are spared. The dramatic exodus from Egypt includes the miraculous crossing of the Red Sea and the destruction of Pharaoh's pursuing army. 
the narrative resumes after a brief interruption of legal and architectural content with the Israelites' idolatry with the Golden Calf and Moses' intercession on their behalf. The lawgiving sections, chapters 19 to 24, occur at Mount Sinai, where God establishes a covenant with the Israelites. These chapters detail the giving of the Ten Commandments and other laws that form the foundation of Israelite society and religious practice. This section underscores the covenant relationship between God and His chosen people, emphasizing obedience, moral conduct, and social justice as integral to their identity and destiny. The architectural details regarding the construction of the tabernacle, chapters 24 to 31 and 35 to 40, provide meticulous instructions on building the portable sanctuary where God will dwell among His people. These chapters describe the design and construction of the Ark of the Covenant, the altar, the table for the showbread, the lampstand, and the priestly garments. This section highlights the importance of holiness and divine presence, illustrating how the Israelites are to maintain their relationship with God through worship and ritual purity. Moses serves as the unifying human hero throughout the narrative. He is portrayed as a reluctant leader who evolves into a powerful prophet, mediator, and lawgiver. His interactions with God, his leadership through crises, and his role in conveying God's laws and instructions to the people underscore his pivotal role in the unfolding drama of deliverance, covenant formation, and the establishment of worship practices. Moses' character embodies the themes of faith, obedience, and perseverance that are central to the book of Exodus. Leviticus primarily serves as a comprehensive rulebook, functioning as a detailed guide for living the religious, moral, and communal life intended by God for his people. The book's structure revolves around using specific, often intricate details to convey universal principles, inviting readers to derive timeless wisdom from its prescriptions and instructions. Leviticus is divided into several sections, each focusing on different aspects of holiness and community life. The opening chapters, 1 to 7, describe various offerings and sacrifices, including burnt, grain, peace, sin, and guilt offerings. These rituals underscore the themes of atonement and reconciliation with God, highlighting the importance of sacrificial worship in maintaining the covenant relationship. The subsequent chapters, 8 to 10, recount the consecration of Aaron and his sons as priests, establishing the priesthood and its crucial role in mediating between God and the people. This section emphasizes the sanctity required of those who serve in the holy sanctuary and the severe consequences of failing to uphold this holiness, as illustrated by the tragic fate of Nadab and Abihu. Chapters 11 to 15 focus on laws concerning purity and impurity, detailing regulations related to dietary restrictions, childbirth, skin diseases, and bodily discharges. These laws highlight the need for ritual cleanliness and the separation of the sacred from the profane, reflecting a broader concern for maintaining holiness in all aspects of daily life. The Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, described in Chapter 16, is a central ritual for collective purification and renewal, underscoring the themes of repentance and divine forgiveness. Chapters 17 to 26, often referred to as the Holiness Code, outline various laws aimed at fostering a just and holy society. These chapters address ethical conduct, sexual behavior, social justice, and the proper observance of festivals and sabbatical years. The Holiness Code articulates an ideal society characterized by fairness, compassion, and reverence for God, portraying a vision of communal life that balances individual responsibilities and collective well-being. Despite its focus on lofty ideals, Leviticus also incorporates realism, addressing everyday human experiences and bodily functions with pragmatic regulations. For instance, the book includes detailed procedures for dealing with natural bodily processes such as menstruation and seminal emissions, ensuring that even mundane aspects of life are brought under the domain of holiness. Leviticus can thus be seen as presenting a utopia, illustrating an ideal society where every institution, practice, and individual action is aligned with divine will. The meticulous attention to ritual and moral purity serves to foster a community that embodies the values of holiness, justice, and reverence, offering a blueprint for a life lived in accordance with God's intentions. Through its detailed regulations, Leviticus invites readers to understand and strive for an existence that harmonizes the sacred and the ordinary, the spiritual and the practical, in their everyday lives. Numbers presents a unique blend of narrative and lawgiving, resulting in a mixed genre format that is both dynamic and instructive. 
The book primarily functions as a travelogue, chronicling the Israelites' 40 years of wandering in the wilderness and their preparation for entering the Promised Land. This period is marked by a series of trials, rebellions, and divine interventions that shape the identity and faith of the Israelite community. The overarching narrative begins with a census of the Israelite tribes, establishing the organizational structure of the people and setting the stage for their journey, chapters 1 to 4. This is followed by various laws and regulations concerning camp organization, purity, and offerings, emphasizing the need for order and holiness, chapters 5 to 10. The narrative sections of Numbers, chapters 10 to 21, 26 to 36, recount the Israelites' travels and key events during their journey. These include the departure from Sinai, the complaints and rebellions of the people, the scouting of Canaan, and the ensuing lack of faith that leads to a prolonged period of wandering. Notable incidents include the rebellion of Korah, the sin of Moses and Aaron at Meribah, the bronze serpent episode, and the story of Balaam, the prophet hired to curse Israel but compelled by God to bless them instead. Throughout these stories, Moses emerges as a central human figure, acting as a leader, mediator, and intercessor between God and the Israelites. His leadership is continually tested as he navigates the challenges of guiding a often rebellious and faithless people. God is portrayed as both just and merciful, responding to the Israelites' disobedience with both punishment and provision, such as manna, quail, and water from the rock. Interspersed with the narrative are additional legal sections, chapters 15, 18 to 19, 27 to 30, 35 to 36, that provide further instructions on offerings, priestly duties, inheritance laws, and vows. These laws serve to prepare the Israelites for life in the Promised Land, ensuring that they maintain their covenant relationship with God and adhere to His commandments. Numbers concludes with another census, signifying the transition from the old generation, which perished in the wilderness due to their unbelief, to a new generation poised to enter Canaan, chapter 26. The final chapters, 27 to 36, include the appointment of Joshua as Moses' successor, additional legal instructions, and the delineation of the boundaries and cities of refuge in the Promised Land. Through a fusion of historical, theological, and literary elements, Numbers not only recounts past events but also conveys timeless experiences and principles. The book underscores themes of faith, obedience, divine justice, and mercy, inviting readers to reflect on their own spiritual journey and relationship with God. By blending detailed legal instructions with vivid narratives of trials and triumphs, Numbers offers a comprehensive and multifaceted portrayal of the Israelites' formative years in the wilderness. Deuteronomy is primarily characterized by its oratory style, featuring Moses delivering a series of formal speeches as he nears the end of his leadership over Israel. These speeches are delivered on the plains of Moab, just before the Israelites are to enter the Promised Land, and they serve as Moses' final exhortation to the people he has led for 40 years. The speeches predominantly focus on lawgiving, reiterating, and expanding upon the laws established in the preceding books of the Pentateuch. This is reflected in the book's title, Deuteronomy, which means second law, or repetition of the law. Moses recaps the covenantal laws given at Sinai, contextualizing them for a new generation that will soon settle in Canaan. He underscores the importance of these laws for maintaining a just, righteous, and holy society under God's guidance. The structure of Deuteronomy is organized into several distinct speeches and discourses. The first speech, chapters 1 to 4, is a historical prologue, where Moses recounts the journey from Sinai to Moab, highlighting the lessons learned from their experiences and God's faithfulness despite the people's frequent disobedience. The second speech, chapters 5 to 28, forms the core of the book, comprising a detailed restatement of the Ten Commandments and a comprehensive legal code. This section includes various laws concerning worship, civil and social regulations, and rules for leadership and warfare. It emphasizes the principles of loving and fearing God, social justice, and communal responsibility. Moses repeatedly stresses the necessity of obedience to these laws as a means to secure God's blessing and avoid the curses associated with disobedience. Covenant renewal serves as the central motif throughout these speeches. Moses calls the Israelites to renew their commitment to the covenant made at Sinai, urging them to remember God's past acts of salvation and to remain faithful to his commandments. 
the blessings and curses in chapters 27 to 28 starkly illustrate the consequences of their choices, obedience will lead to prosperity, peace, and divine favor, while disobedience will result in disaster, exile, and suffering. The final four chapters, chapters 31 to 34, transition from oratory to narrative, focusing on the succession of leadership from Moses to Joshua. These chapters include Moses' final instructions, the commissioning of Joshua, the writing of the law, and the Song of Moses, which serves as a poetic reminder of God's justice and mercy. The narrative culminates with Moses' death on Mount Nebo, where he views the promised land he is not permitted to enter, and Joshua's ascent to leadership. Deuteronomy, thus, encapsulates a pivotal moment in Israel's history, blending powerful oratory with legal instruction and narrative transition. It reinforces the themes of covenant, law, and leadership, underscoring the relationship between faithfulness to God's commands and the well-being of the community. Through Moses' speeches, the book calls the Israelites, and future readers, to a deeper understanding and commitment to the covenant with God, emphasizing the profound impact of obedience and disobedience on their destiny. Joshua adopts a mixed-genre format, often referred to by literary scholars as an encyclopedic form. This structure allows the book to blend narrative and documentary elements seamlessly, providing a comprehensive account of Israel's conquest and settlement of the Promised Land. The initial 12 chapters primarily consist of narrative, focusing on the military conquests led by Joshua. These chapters present an epic narrative depicting a nation at a pivotal moment in its history. The story begins with the miraculous crossing of the Jordan River, symbolizing a new beginning for the Israelites. The subsequent battles, such as the fall of Jericho and the conquest of Ari, highlight themes of faith, obedience, and divine intervention. These narratives emphasize God's role as the divine warrior who leads Israel to victory, reinforcing the idea that their success depends on their faithfulness to him. Chapters 13 to 21 shift to a documentary history, meticulously detailing the division of the promised land among the 12 tribes of Israel. This section outlines the specific boundaries and allocations for each tribe, providing a legal and geographical record of the land distribution. The detailed descriptions underscore the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they emphasize the importance of the land as a tangible sign of the covenant. The inclusion of cities of refuge and Levitical cities highlights the integration of justice and worship in the new societal structure. The concluding three chapters, 22 to 24, return to a narrative mode, chronicling Joshua's final words and his passing. Joshua calls the people to remain faithful to the covenant, recounting God's faithfulness and the importance of serving him exclusively. The famous declaration, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, encapsulates Joshua's legacy of leadership and devotion. These chapters also include the renewal of the covenant at Shechem, where the people judges stands as a testament to the power of storytelling, presenting an anthology of hero narratives where the protagonists, true to literary tradition, are seldom entirely virtuous. The book features a series of judges, charismatic leaders raised by God to deliver Israel from oppression, each with their own flaws and complexities. Three larger-than-life figures, Aid, Gideon, and Samson, capture our imagination with their dramatic and often unconventional exploits. Aid, known for his daring assassination of the Moabite King Eglon, showcases cunning and bravery. Gideon, who starts as a reluctant leader, is remembered for his victory over the Midianites with a drastically reduced army, illustrating faith and strategic acumen. Samson, perhaps the most iconic of all, embodies the criteria of classical tragedy. His extraordinary strength and tumultuous life, marked by personal failings and eventual redemption through a sacrificial death, offer a profound narrative of human weakness and divine purpose. The book follows a cyclic narrative pattern that underlines its moral and theological themes. The Israelites repeatedly stray from righteousness, turning to idolatry and immoral behavior, which leads to their oppression by neighboring tribes or nations. This period of suffering prompts the Israelites to cry out to God for deliverance. In response, God raises a judge to rescue and lead them, restoring peace and order, at least temporarily. This cycle of sin, oppression, repentance, and deliverance recurs throughout the book, highlighting the Israelites' persistent struggle with faithfulness and the enduring mercy of God. Judges, therefore, not only recounts the exploits of its titular heroes, but also serves as a reflection on the human condition, the consequences of disobedience, and the possibility of redemption. 
Through its vivid storytelling and complex characters, the book offers timeless lessons on leadership, faith, and the cyclical nature of human history. Ruth represents a pinnacle of storytelling within the Bible, exemplifying the genre of idol with its short narratives that depict the simplicity and charm of rural and domestic life. The narrative unfolds as a poignant love story, infused with elements of heroism and loyalty. Set during the time of the judges, the story begins with tragedy, a famine forces Naomi and her family to leave Bethlehem and settle in Moab. There, Naomi's husband and two sons die, leaving her and her Moabite daughters-in-law widowed. The initial sorrow sets the stage for a narrative arc that will ascend toward a joyful resolution. The tale's overarching motifs include the quest for home and restoration. Naomi decides to return to Bethlehem, and Ruth, displaying remarkable loyalty and heroism, pledges to stay with her, famously declaring, where you go, I will go, where you lodge, I will lodge, your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Upon their return, Ruth's dedication continues as she gleans in the fields to provide for Naomi. Her hard work and virtuous character attract the attention of Boaz, a relative of Naomi's late husband. The narrative highlights Ruth's courage and initiative, and Boaz's kindness and integrity. Their relationship blossoms into a romance that adheres to the customs of leveret marriage, emphasizing themes of duty, protection, and providence. The story follows a comic, U-shaped plot trajectory. It begins with the low point of loss and exile, but steadily rises as Ruth's and Naomi's fortunes improve through Ruth's marriage to Boaz. The resolution brings not only personal happiness, but also communal rejoicing. Ruth's union with Boaz restores Naomi's hope and secures her family's lineage, culminating in the birth of Obed, the grandfather of King David, thereby linking Ruth to the greater narrative of Israel's history. Ruth, therefore, is a masterful blend of personal devotion, divine providence, and communal restoration. Its idyllic portrayal of rural life, coupled with its deep emotional resonance and themes of loyalty, love, and redemption, make it a timeless and cherished story within the biblical canon. 1 Samuel amalgamates historical chronicles with a rich collection of literary narratives, offering vivid depictions of events that resonate with universal human experiences. While history recounts what occurred, literature transcends this by illuminating deeper truths about human nature and divine interaction. The narrative revolves around three central figures, Samuel, Saul, and David. Samuel, the last judge and a prophet, plays a crucial role in the transition from the period of the judges to the establishment of the monarchy. His story highlights themes of divine calling, leadership, and obedience. Saul, the first king of Israel, is portrayed as a tragic hero. His rise to power is marked by initial promise and success, but his reign gradually unravels due to his disobedience to God and his increasingly erratic behavior. Saul's narrative is a poignant exploration of the complexities of leadership, the consequences of pride, and the tragic downfall of a once promising leader. David, introduced as a young shepherd who gains fame by defeating the giant Goliath, embodies the virtues of faith, courage, and humility. His anointing by Samuel as Saul's successor and his subsequent adventures form a significant part of the book. David's story sets the stage for his eventual rise to kingship and highlights his deep relationship with God, contrasting sharply with Saul's tragic trajectory. First Samuel seamlessly integrates national events with detailed biographies of these key individuals. The historical sections document significant occurrences, such as the defeat of the Philistines, the anointing of kings, and the struggles for power that shaped the destiny of Israel. Meanwhile, the literary portions delve deeply into the personal lives and inner conflicts of Samuel, Saul, and David, providing profound insights into their characters and the divine influences that guide their paths. By blending historical records with literary narratives, 1 Samuel offers a multidimensional portrayal of Israel's early monarchy. It captures the intricate interplay between divine providence and human agency, making it a timeless exploration of leadership, faith, and the human condition. 2 Samuel serves as the prose epic of David, often referred to as the court history, meticulously detailing the events and intrigues of the royal court, likely recorded by an official scribe. This narrative encompasses elements of both heroism and tragedy, capturing the complexities of David's reign. The book opens with David's ascension to the throne following the death of Saul and Jonathan, portraying him as a heroic and charismatic leader who unites the tribes of Israel. 
his military conquests and diplomatic achievements, such as the capture of Jerusalem and the establishment of it as the political and religious capital, underscore his prowess and strategic acumen. However, the narrative also delves into the darker, more tragic aspects of David's rule. The infamous episode with Bathsheba and the subsequent murder of her husband Uriah mark a turning point, bringing personal and political turmoil. Nathan the Prophet's confrontation with David highlights themes of sin, repentance, and divine justice. The latter part of the book focuses on the internal strife within David's family and court, including the rebellion of his son Absalom. These accounts are marked by intense drama and emotional conflict, illustrating the tragic consequences of David's earlier actions and the perpetual tension between his public duties and private failings. Through its detailed chronicle of David's victories and vulnerabilities, 2 Samuel presents a nuanced portrait of a complex ruler. The blend of heroism and tragedy within the narrative offers profound insights into the nature of leadership, the fragility of human virtue, and the enduring impact of personal choices on a nation's destiny. First Kings serves as both a detailed court history, chronicling the actions of various kings, and a profound religious history, reflecting the deeply ingrained religious worldview of the Israelites. The entrance of the prophet Elijah in the final six chapters introduces elements of biography and heroism into the narrative, adding layers of spiritual significance to the historical events. The book can be broadly divided into three distinct segments, each with its own thematic focus and narrative trajectory. The first segment, chapters 1 to 11, centers on the reign of Solomon, highlighting his wisdom, wealth, and building projects such as the temple in Jerusalem. This section provides insight into the splendor and prosperity of Israel during Solomon's rule, as well as the challenges he faced, including political intrigues and the consequences of his alliances and marriages with foreign women. The second segment, chapters 12 to 16, focuses on the succession narrative, depicting the division of the kingdom into two, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. This period is marked by political instability, rebellion, and idolatry, as successive kings led their nations away from the worship of Yahweh and into spiritual apostasy. The narrative highlights the consequences of disobedience and the erosion of the covenant relationship between God and his people. The third segment, chapters 17 to 22, centers on the conflict between Ahab, the wicked king of Israel, and the prophet Elijah. This section introduces elements of dramatic confrontation and divine intervention, as Elijah boldly confronts Ahab and challenges the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. The narrative underscores the ongoing struggle between idolatry and true worship, as well as the prophetic call to repentance and obedience to God's commandments. Throughout the book, First Kings interweaves historical accounts with theological reflections, offering a multifaceted portrait of Israel's monarchy and its relationship with God. The inclusion of biographical details about Solomon and Elijah adds depth to the narrative, highlighting the personal struggles and spiritual dimensions of leadership. Ultimately, First Kings serves as a compelling testament to the complexities of power, the consequences of faithfulness or faithlessness, and the enduring relevance of divine judgment and redemption in human affairs. Second Kings presents a court history of the kingdoms of Israel and Judah, documenting their rise and eventual decline. While hero stories about virtuous kings are woven throughout, the overarching narrative traces the gradual decline and eventual downfall of both nations. Various subgenres, such as prophetic narratives, miracle stories, political histories, tales of intrigue, and battle narratives, contribute to the richness of the text. The storyteller adept recreates memorable moments that captivate the imagination of readers. First Chronicles transcends the confines of a mere hero story, offering an expansive narrative of King David's accomplishments meticulously recorded by a court historian. This comprehensive account not only celebrates David's reign but also serves as a sweeping national history, emphasizing the collective identity of the nation through repeated references to all Israel. The predominant focus of First Chronicles lies on a documentary impulse to meticulously record data and lists, diverging from earlier historical books where individuals and events take precedence. The text meticulously catalogues genealogies, temple arrangements, and administrative divisions, reflecting a meticulous concern for accuracy and detail. The genealogical sections, in particular, trace the lineage of key figures from Adam to the leaders of David's time, establishing continuity and legitimacy for the monarchy. 
These genealogies highlight the interconnectedness of Israel's tribes and underscore the divine providence guiding the nation's history. In addition to genealogies, First Chronicles provides detailed accounts of David's military victories, administrative reforms, and preparations for building the temple in Jerusalem. These sections not only exalt David's accomplishments but also emphasize his devotion to God and his commitment to establishing Jerusalem as the spiritual and political center of Israel. Throughout the narrative, the court historian's meticulous recording of data and events serves to reinforce the nation's collective memory and identity. By documenting David's reign in such meticulous detail, First Chronicles not only honors the king's legacy but also affirms the enduring significance of Israel's history and covenant relationship with God. Second Chronicles continues the tradition of historical chronicles, delving deep into the personalities and reigns of the kings of Judah. This comprehensive account not only highlights the actions and decisions of these monarchs, but also provides profound insights into their relationships with God and the spiritual climate of the nation. A profound religious perspective permeates the narrative, illustrating God's responses to obedience and disobedience to his covenant through rewards and punishments. The book meticulously traces the religious reforms and spiritual revivals initiated by certain kings, such as Hezekiah and Josiah, and contrasts them with the idolatry and apostasy of others, such as Ahaz and Manasseh. The narrative vividly depicts God's interventions in the affairs of Judah, ranging from divine blessings and victories in times of faithfulness to divine judgment and calamity in times of rebellion. Miracles, prophesies, and angelic appearances punctuate the historical accounts, highlighting the active presence of God in the nation's history. In addition to highlighting the spiritual dimensions of Judah's kingship, Second Chronicles also emphasizes the importance of the temple in Jerusalem as the focal point of worship and divine encounter. The book meticulously describes the construction, dedication, and restoration of the temple, underscoring its central role in the religious life of the nation. Through its meticulous recording of historical events and its profound religious perspective, Second Chronicles offers readers a rich tapestry of the spiritual and political dynamics of ancient Judah. It serves as a powerful reminder of the enduring consequences of faithfulness or faithlessness to God's covenant and the timeless principles of divine sovereignty and human responsibility. Ezra intricately weaves the tale of two waves of Jewish exiles returning to Jerusalem following their captivity in Babylon portraying the archetype of a nation's revival in its ancestral homeland. The narrative is imbued with profound themes of restoration, renewal, and religious revival. The central motifs of Ezra's narrative are the triumphant return of the exiles to Jerusalem, the arduous task of rebuilding the temple and the city walls, and the imperative of religious and spiritual reform. These three themes form the backbone of the book, tracing the journey of the Jewish people from exile to restoration under the guidance of Ezra the scribe and Nehemiah the governor. The first wave of exiles, led by Zerubbabel, returns to Jerusalem with the decree of Cyrus, the Persian king. Their primary focus is the rebuilding of the temple, the central sanctuary of Jewish worship. Despite facing opposition and setbacks, the exiles persevere in their task, driven by a deep sense of national identity and religious devotion. The second wave of exiles, led by Ezra himself, arrives in Jerusalem with a mandate to enforce religious and moral reforms among the returned exiles. Ezra's central role is to reintroduce and enforce the law of Moses, re-establishing the covenantal relationship between God and his people. His efforts lead to a spiritual revival among the returned exiles, as they renew their commitment to God and his commandments. Throughout the narrative, Ezra highlights the challenges and triumphs of the returning exiles, as well as the divine providence that guides their steps. The rebuilding of the temple and the city wall symbolizes the physical restoration of Jerusalem, while the religious reforms underscore the spiritual renewal of the Jewish people. Ezra's tale is not merely a historical account, but also a timeless testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the enduring power of faith. It serves as a reminder of the importance of national identity, religious heritage, and collective memory in shaping the destiny of a people. Through the narrative of returning, rebuilding, and reforming, Ezra offers readers a profound reflection on the themes of restoration, renewal, and revival in both individual and communal life. Nehemiah presents a multifaceted narrative, rich in its blend of heroism, the return from exile, civil records, a governor's report, and a manual on effective management. 
The central focus of the book is the ambitious project of rebuilding Jerusalem's walls, which occupies a significant portion of the narrative, holding both literal and symbolic significance. The tale unfolds with Nehemiah, a trusted cupbearer to the Persian king Artaxerxes, receiving distressing news about the state of Jerusalem's walls and gates. Fueled by a deep sense of duty and devotion to his homeland, Nehemiah petitions the king for permission to return to Jerusalem and oversee the reconstruction efforts. Upon arriving in Jerusalem, Nehemiah faces numerous challenges, including opposition from neighboring governors, internal discord among the Jewish inhabitants, and logistical hurdles in coordinating the massive construction project. Despite these obstacles, Nehemiah demonstrates remarkable leadership, courage, and resourcefulness, rallying the people to work together with zeal and determination. The rebuilding of Jerusalem's wall serves not only as a practical necessity for the city's security but also as a powerful symbol of restoration, resilience, and national identity for the Jewish people. The successful completion of the project under Nehemiah's leadership reflects the divine favor and providence guiding their efforts, reinforcing the spiritual and emotional significance of the endeavor. In addition to the narrative of the wall's construction, Nehemiah provides valuable insights into principles of effective leadership, strategic planning, conflict resolution, and community engagement. Nehemiah's governorship exemplifies principles of servant leadership, humility, and reliance on prayer and divine guidance in the face of adversity. The enduring popularity of Nehemiah for retreats, seminars, and leadership training underscores its value in imparting timeless principles for living. The book's relevance extends beyond its historical context, offering profound lessons on perseverance, faithfulness, and the transformative power of visionary leadership in overcoming obstacles and achieving collective goals. Through its rich narrative tapestry, Nehemiah continues to inspire and instruct readers in navigating the challenges of leadership, stewardship, and community building in all aspects of life. Esther stands as a quintessential hero narrative, revered for its masterful storytelling that captures the essence of human intrigue and drama. Indeed, it embodies nearly all the elements that captivate our interest in a tale, weaving a rich tapestry of suspense, intrigue, and triumph. The overarching pattern of the narrative follows a U-shaped trajectory, descending into potential tragedy before ascending to a joyful resolution, a plot structure known to literary scholars as comedy. At the heart of this narrative arc lies the captivating story of Esther, a Jewish orphan who rises to become Queen of Persia. Within this narrative, the comedic plot intertwines with themes of rescue, adding depth to the story's appeal. Esther's courage and cunning, along with the guidance of her cousin Mordecai, drive the narrative forward as they navigate the treacherous court of King Xerxes. The impending threat of genocide against the Jewish people, orchestrated by the wicked Haman, sets the stage for a high-stakes conflict between good and evil. As the tension mounts and the situation appears dire, Esther risks her life by revealing her true identity as a Jew and pleading with the king to spare her people. Through a series of dramatic twists and turns, including a reversal of fortune that sees Haman's plot exposed and his own demise, the narrative reaches its climax in a jubilant victory for the Jews. Esther's story is not only a tale of personal heroism, but also a testament to the power of faith, courage, and divine providence in overcoming adversity. It resonates with audiences across cultures and generations, offering timeless lessons on resilience, justice, and the triumph of good over evil. In its masterful blend of suspense, humor, and moral depth, Esther continues to captivate readers and inspire admiration for its compelling characters and timeless themes. It stands as a testament to the enduring power of storytelling to illuminate the human experience and uplift the human spirit. Job is widely acclaimed as the zenith of literary brilliance within the Old Testament, revered for its profound exploration of theological themes through the lens of poetic drama. While never intended for stage performance, it is often regarded as a closet drama, a term used to describe plays written to be read rather than performed. Thematically, Job stands as a singular masterpiece within the Bible, offering a comprehensive theodicy, a profound contemplation of God's goodness and omnipotence in the face of evil and suffering in the world, commonly known as the problem of evil. The narrative unfolds with Job, a righteous and prosperous man, facing a series of unimaginable trials and tribulations, including the loss of his wealth, health, and family. 
As Job wrestles with his suffering and seeks to understand the nature of God's justice, the dialogue between Job and his friends serves as a vehicle for exploring profound questions about the nature of suffering, the limits of human understanding, and the mystery of divine providence. The poetic exchanges between Job and his companions, as well as the divine speeches that follow, delve into the complexities of human experience and the enigmatic ways of God. Job's profound and haunting exploration of these themes demands a slow, reflective reading to fully appreciate its richness and beauty. The poetic language, intricate imagery, and profound philosophical insights invite readers into a journey of contemplation and introspection, challenging them to confront the deepest mysteries of existence and faith. In its poetic brilliance and profound theological depth, Job continues to captivate readers and scholars alike, offering solace and wisdom in the midst of life's most profound questions and challenges. It stands as a timeless testament to the enduring power of literature to illuminate the human condition and offer glimpses of transcendent truth. Psalm stands as a rich and diverse anthology of poetry within the Old Testament, comprising a collection of lyric poems that eloquently express the thoughts, emotions, and experiences of the speaker. Unlike narrative texts, each psalm stands alone as a self-contained literary work, offering unique insights and expressions of faith and devotion. Central to the poetic beauty of the psalms is the distinctive verse form known as parallelism, a poetic technique where successive lines or phrases mirror, contrast, or amplify each other, showcasing the poet's mastery of language and rhythm. This parallel structure not only enhances the aesthetic appeal of the psalms, but also serves to reinforce the thematic depth and emotional resonance of the poetry. While all psalms share the common characteristics of lyricism and parallelism, they often fall into specific genres or thematic categories, each with its own distinctive focus and tone. Lament psalms express deep sorrow, anguish, or complaint, often in the context of personal or communal suffering. Praise psalms celebrate the greatness, goodness, and faithfulness of God, offering heartfelt expressions of gratitude and adoration. Nature psalms reflect on the beauty, majesty, and order of the natural world, inviting readers to contemplate the wonders of creation. Worship psalms exhort believers to reverence, obedience, and praise, serving as liturgical expressions of devotion and commitment to God. The psalms, with their rich diversity of themes and poetic expressions, continue to resonate with readers across cultures and generations, offering solace, inspiration, and spiritual nourishment. Whether in times of joy or sorrow, praise or lament, the psalms provide a timeless voice for the human soul to connect with the divine, offering words of comfort, hope, and renewal in every season of life. While Proverbs may not initially appear as poetry in the traditional lyrical sense found in Psalms, its structure unveils a sophisticated form of poetry known as parallelism. This poetic technique is evident throughout the book, enriching its wisdom literature with rhythmic and thematic depth. Proverbs predominantly comprises concise and memorable statements known as Proverbs, which convey general truths about life, human nature, and the principles of wisdom. These proverbs are characterized by their brevity and clarity, making them easily memorable and applicable to various situations. Each proverb in Proverbs serves as a keen observation about life, offering practical insights and timeless wisdom essential for navigating the complexities of daily existence. Whether addressing topics such as integrity, diligence, humility, or the fear of the Lord, each proverb distills profound truths into succinct and accessible language, guiding readers in making wise decisions and living virtuous lives. The Book of Proverbs, with its blend of poetic beauty and practical wisdom, continues to resonate with readers across cultures and generations. Its timeless teachings serve as a source of guidance, inspiration, and moral instruction, offering a roadmap for living a life of virtue, integrity, and spiritual fulfillment. Through its rich tapestry of Proverbs, Proverbs invites readers to embrace the pursuit of wisdom and the pursuit of a life well-lived. Ecclesiastes, often presented in prose in English translations, bears the hallmarks of poetry in its structure and style. Its primary component is the proverb, though tightly structured unlike the collections found in Proverbs. Despite lacking a conventional narrative structure, the book unfolds as a profound exploration of the human condition through a series of individual units. At its core, Ecclesiastes recounts the author's relentless quest for meaning and fulfillment in life. 
it navigates the existential landscape through a prolonged contrast between passages focused on the emptiness and futility of life under purely human and earthly values, labeled as under the sun, and those centered on God and divine wisdom, termed as above the sun, offering an alternative perspective that transcends mortal concerns. Ecclesiastes reads akin to a personal journal, inviting readers into the author's introspective journey. Through reflections, recollections of past experiences, and evocative mood pieces, the text grapples with profound questions of purpose, mortality, and the nature of existence. The author's candid exploration of life's complexities and contradictions resonates with readers, inviting them to contemplate the fleeting nature of worldly pursuits and the enduring value of seeking wisdom and virtue. In its poetic prose and philosophical depth, Ecclesiastes stands as a timeless meditation on the human condition, offering insights and wisdom that transcend the boundaries of time and culture. Its enduring relevance lies in its capacity to speak to the universal experiences of joy and sorrow, success and failure, and the perennial search for meaning and significance in a world marked by impermanence and uncertainty. Through its poignant reflections and profound truths, Ecclesiastes continues to inspire contemplation, introspection, and spiritual growth in readers of all ages and backgrounds. The Song of Solomon stands as a captivating collection of love poems, each intricately woven around a singular courtship and marriage, akin to the tradition of an epithalamian, or marriage poem. Reflecting the timeless allure of love poetry, these verses artfully express romantic emotions in elevated language, exalting the beloved, comparing them to the marvels of nature, and extending an invitation to a life of mutual love and intimacy. This pastoral anthology adheres closely to the conventions of love poetry, capturing the essence of courtship and marriage through vivid imagery and heartfelt sentiment. Its verses depict the tender moments of longing and desire, the exhilaration of love's pursuit, and the profound intimacy of union and commitment. In navigating the Song of Solomon, it is essential to resist the temptation to allegorize its details arbitrarily. Instead, readers are encouraged to immerse themselves fully in the exquisite beauty of its verses, appreciating them as the pinnacle of love poetry. Indeed, the title itself, The Song of Songs, aptly conveys the lofty status of this collection, emphasizing its distinction as the best of the best among love songs. As readers delve into the Song of Solomon, they are invited to journey alongside the lovers as they navigate the complexities of their relationship, celebrating the joys of love and the enduring power of human connection. Through its rich tapestry of imagery and emotion, the Song of Solomon continues to captivate hearts and inspire reverence for the profound mysteries of love and intimacy. Isaiah is celebrated for its encyclopedic form, presenting a vast anthology that spans diverse genres and forms. Its magnitude has earned it titles such as A Bible Within the Bible and A Miniature Bible, reflecting the richness and depth of its content. Due to its expansive nature, readers are encouraged to approach individual passages within Isaiah as self-contained units, rather than expecting a continuous narrative thread. The book encompasses a wide range of themes, styles, and perspectives, leading to abrupt shifts in genre, mood, and time frame throughout its chapters. In terms of prophecy, Isaiah offers a panoramic view of history and eschatology, ranging from predictions of immediate events to those of an intermediate future, especially concerning the coming of Christ. The prophetic scope of Isaiah extends even to prophesies concerning the end times, offering glimpses into the ultimate fulfillment of God's redemptive plan for humanity. Navigating Isaiah requires readers to engage with its diverse literary forms, including oracles, visions, narratives, and poetry, each conveying unique insights into God's purposes and promises for his people. By embracing the multifaceted nature of the text, readers can uncover layers of meaning and significance that speak to the complexities of human experience and the eternal truths of God's sovereignty and grace. Ultimately, Isaiah serves as a profound testament to the prophetic vision and literary genius of its namesake author, inviting readers to explore the depths of divine revelation and to ponder the mysteries of faith, redemption, and hope. In its breadth and depth, Isaiah continues to inspire and challenge readers to encounter the living word of God and to discern his voice speaking across the ages. Jeremiah is distinguished by its elegiac tone, which serves as a poignant backdrop for chronicling both the persecuted life of its central figure, the prophet Jeremiah, and the tragic decline of the nation of Judah. The overarching narrative of the book revolves around the arduous journey of a righteous man enduring immense adversity amidst a backdrop of national turmoil and spiritual decay. 
the prophet Jeremiah emerges as a compelling protagonist, embodying the struggles and suffering of the faithful remnant amidst a society engulfed in moral and political upheaval. His prophetic ministry becomes a testament to steadfast faithfulness in the face of opposition and persecution. Interwoven with Jeremiah's personal narrative are oracles of judgment that pervade the book, delivering a sobering message of the consequences of disobedience and the urgency of heeding God's call for repentance and reform. Through vivid imagery and prophetic pronouncements, Jeremiah warns of impending judgment and calls the people of Judah to turn from their wicked ways and return to the covenant relationship with God. Central to the thematic tapestry of Jeremiah is the portrayal of Jerusalem as the wicked city, symbolizing the spiritual and moral decay of the nation. The prophet's vivid descriptions of social injustice, idolatry, and spiritual apostasy serve as a poignant indictment of the nation's collective guilt and a call to genuine repentance. The consequences of crime and punishment loom large throughout the book, as Jeremiah bears witness to the devastating impact of sin and rebellion on individuals and society as a whole. Yet, amidst the darkness and despair, there are glimpses of hope and redemption, as Jeremiah proclaims God's promise of restoration and renewal for those who turn to him in humility and contrition. In its portrayal of human frailty and divine sovereignty, Jeremiah offers readers a timeless reflection on the complexities of faith, suffering, and redemption. It stands as a prophetic witness to the enduring relevance of God's word in every age, calling individuals and nations to heed the voice of divine truth and embrace the path of righteousness and reconciliation. Lamentation serves as a poignant elegy, mourning the tragic demise of Jerusalem and the desolation of its people. Despite the profound sorrow that saturates its verses, showcasing an emotional depth rarely paralleled in literature, the work is not devoid of artistic craftsmanship. A notable feature of Lamentations is its intricate structure, adding to its literary richness and complexity. Four of its five chapters are meticulously crafted in the form of an acrostic, where each successive unit begins with consecutive letters of the Hebrew alphabet. This formalized expression of grief within a highly structured literary framework underscores the depth of the poet's lamentation and amplifies the intensity of the mourning depicted throughout the text. The acrostic structure serves as a poignant reminder of the systematic destruction and devastation wrought upon Jerusalem and its inhabitants, as each letter of the alphabet becomes a poignant symbol of the city's anguish and despair. Through this meticulous arrangement, the poet transforms the act of mourning into a disciplined and artful expression of grief, capturing the full spectrum of human emotion in the face of overwhelming loss. In addition to its formal structure, lamentations abounds with vivid imagery, metaphor, and symbolism, further enriching its artistic appeal. The poet's evocative language paints a vivid portrait of the city's desolation, depicting scenes of ruin, devastation, and lamentation with haunting clarity. As readers immerse themselves in the lamentations of the poet, they are invited to bear witness to the profound suffering and sorrow of a people in mourning. Through its artful expression of grief and its poignant portrayal of human suffering, Lamentation stands as a timeless testament to the enduring power of Lamentation as a form of literary and spiritual expression. Ezekiel, much like Isaiah, presents a multifaceted tapestry of genres, demanding an approach that considers each unit on its own merits. The book unfolds with a rich tapestry of symbolism and visionary prose, where vivid imagery and fantastical elements serve to illuminate deeper spiritual truths. Symbolism permeates the pages of Ezekiel, as the prophet employs allegorical language and visionary imagery to convey profound spiritual realities. Through symbolic acts and vivid visions, Ezekiel unveils the divine mysteries of God's judgment, mercy, and redemption, offering insights into the complex interplay between human sinfulness and divine sovereignty. A prevalent theme in Ezekiel, shared with numerous Old Testament prophesies, involves oracles of judgment pronounced against the prophet's own nation, neighboring nations, and even cosmic powers. These oracles serve as a stark reminder of the consequences of disobedience and rebellion against God's covenant, while also pointing towards the possibility of repentance and restoration. In addition to pronouncing judgment, Ezekiel also offers prophesies of future blessings and restoration for God's people. Amidst the darkness of exile and judgment, the prophet holds out hope for a future day when God will renew his covenant with his people, gathering them from the nations and establishing his kingdom of righteousness and peace. Through its diverse array of genres and its rich symbolism and visionary writing, Ezekiel invites readers into a profound encounter with the living God. 
it challenges them to wrestle with the complexities of divine judgment and mercy, and to embrace the promise of hope and restoration found in God's steadfast love and faithfulness. Daniel unfolds as a narrative tapestry woven with two distinct sections, six chapters of captivating hero stories and an equal number dedicated to prophetic visions. Within the hero stories, Daniel emerges as a central figure, navigating the challenges of exile with unwavering faith and integrity. These narratives offer glimpses into the personal trials and triumphs of Daniel and his companions as they navigate the corridors of power in foreign lands. Meanwhile, the prophetic visions contained in the latter half of the book provide a panoramic view of future events, offering insights into the rise and fall of nations and empires. Through vivid imagery and symbolic language, these visions illuminate the divine plan unfolding throughout history, showcasing God's ultimate sovereignty over the affairs of humanity. Throughout the book, the figure of Daniel serves as a unifying thread, anchoring both the hero stories and the prophetic visions in a common narrative framework. His unwavering devotion to God and his commitment to righteousness stand as a beacon of hope amidst the tumultuous currents of political intrigue and spiritual warfare. At the heart of Daniel lies the overarching theme of God's sovereignty, which permeates every aspect of the narrative. From the humble beginnings of Daniel and his companions in captivity to their rise to prominence in the courts of foreign kings, God's providential guidance is evident at every turn. Even in the midst of uncertainty and adversity, Daniel's steadfast faith in God's promises serves as a testimony to the enduring power of divine providence. As readers journey through the pages of Daniel, they are invited to witness the interplay between human agency and divine intervention, and to ponder the mysteries of God's plan for redemption and restoration. Through its blend of captivating narratives and prophetic revelations, Daniel offers a timeless message of hope, resilience, and faithfulness in the face of adversity, reminding readers of God's unfailing presence and sovereignty over all creation. The prophecy of Hosea is characterized by a profound and evocative symbol deeply rooted in the personal experiences of the prophet himself. Hosea's marriage to a wife who would ultimately prove unfaithful, followed by his remarkable act of reconciliation despite her abandonment, serves as a poignant and enduring metaphor for Israel's spiritual infidelity and God's enduring love and faithfulness. Through Hosea's marital metaphor, the prophet vividly depicts the broken covenant between God and his people. Just as Hosea's wife strays from her marital vows, Israel has turned away from their covenant relationship with God, pursuing idols and false gods instead of remaining faithful to the one who has loved them with an everlasting love. The prophet's personal anguish and heartache mirror God's own grief over the spiritual adultery of his people. Despite Israel's waywardness and rebellion, however, Hosea's act of reconciliation with his wife serves as a powerful testament to the depth of God's compassion and mercy. In Hosea's forgiveness and restoration of his unfaithful spouse, readers are offered a glimpse of the divine longing for reconciliation and redemption. As readers engage with the prophecy of Hosea, they are confronted with the stark realities of human sinfulness and divine grace. Through the prophet's poignant metaphor, they are invited to reflect on their own relationship with God and to consider the ways in which they, too, may have strayed from his loving embrace. Yet, amidst the pain and brokenness of the human condition, Hosea's message ultimately resounds with hope, a hope grounded in the unchanging faithfulness of God and his relentless pursuit of his wayward children. In contrast to the vivid metaphor of the unfaithful wife in Hosea, Joel employs a striking and terrifying image, the devouring locust, to symbolize God's impending judgment upon a rebellious nation. This imagery imbues the book with a sense of dread and urgency, evoking parallels with the horror Gunra and emphasizing the severity of divine judgment upon those who have strayed from his ways. The portrayal of the locust invasion as a harbinger of divine judgment underscores the gravity of Israel's spiritual apostasy and the dire consequences of turning away from God. The relentless and destructive force of the locust serves as a chilling reminder of the impending doom that awaits those who persist in rebellion against God's covenant. However, amidst the backdrop of impending judgment, Joel's prophecy offers a surprising message of hope and redemption. Unlike many prophetic works that are predominantly focused on pronouncements of judgment, Joel's prophecy is carefully structured to include both a bad news section, consisting of two oracles of judgment, and a good news section, featuring two oracles of redemption. In the good news section of the prophecy, Joel paints a vivid picture of God's gracious intervention and restoration, promising to pour out his spirit upon all flesh and to bring about a time of renewal and abundance for his people. 
this message of redemption serves as a beacon of hope amidst the darkness of impending judgment, offering reassurance to those who turn to God in repentance and faith. As readers engage with the prophecy of Joel, they are confronted with the stark realities of sin and judgment, but they are also invited to embrace the promise of God's unfailing mercy and grace. Through its powerful imagery and prophetic vision, Joel's prophecy continues to resonate with readers, challenging them to heed the call to repentance and to embrace the hope of redemption offered through the saving work of God. Amos stands out as a literary treasure within the Bible, boasting a rich array of literary techniques that make it one of the most densely packed books in the canon. Led by the straightforward prophet Amos, its pages unfold with a tapestry of metaphor and parody, demonstrating the prophet's mastery in conveying his message with poignant effectiveness. Amos's use of metaphor and parody serves as a powerful tool in his prophetic arsenal, allowing him to challenge societal norms and expose the injustices that plague his nation. Through vivid imagery and clever wordplay, he lays bare the disparities between the privileged elite and the marginalized classes, shining a light on the systemic oppression and exploitation that pervade society. Central to Amos's prophecy is his fervent advocacy for the oppressed and downtrodden. His scathing critique of social injustice and moral corruption serves as a rallying cry for righteousness and equity, calling his audience to account for their neglect of the poor and their pursuit of wealth and power at the expense of the vulnerable. While Amos's prophecy is often characterized as a work of literary satire, it is important to recognize that his message carries a deeper significance beyond mere humor. While his use of irony and sarcasm may elicit laughter, it also serves as a sobering indictment of society's moral decay and spiritual complacency. Through its powerful blend of literary techniques and prophetic insight, Amos's prophecy continues to resonate with readers, challenging them to confront the injustices of their own time and to strive for a world characterized by justice, mercy, and compassion. As readers engage with the prophetic words of Amos, they are invited to heed the call to pursue righteousness and to work towards the establishment of God's kingdom of peace and justice on earth. Obadiah distinguishes itself among the five one-chapter books in the Bible for its remarkable brevity and conciseness. Despite its succinct nature, this prophetic work carries significant weight as it delivers a scathing denouncement not against Israel or Judah, but rather against the pagan nation of Edom. In a departure from the typical focus of prophetic judgment on Israel or Judah, Obadiah directs its ire towards Edom, highlighting the nation's pride, arrogance, and complicity in the downfall of God's people. Through vivid imagery and powerful rhetoric, the prophet condemns Edom's betrayal and exploitation of their brethren, portraying them as instruments of divine judgment against their own kin. Yet, amidst the pronouncement of judgment upon Edom, Obadiah also offers a prophecy of future glory awaiting God's people. The book concludes with a vision of restoration and vindication for the house of Jacob, as God's righteous judgment ultimately brings about the exaltation of his chosen people and the establishment of his kingdom on earth. As readers engage with the prophecy of Obadiah, they are confronted with the sobering reality of divine judgment upon the nations and the consequences of pride and injustice. Through its concise yet powerful message, Obadiah serves as a timeless reminder of the importance of humility, justice, and fidelity to God's covenant, while also offering hope for a future characterized by restoration and redemption. Jonah emerges as a compelling satirical narrative, where the prophet himself becomes the subject of biting critique woven intricately throughout the story. At its core, the narrative skews the concept of ethnocentrism, the tendency to claim exclusivity to God's favor for one's own nation, exposing the folly of such narrow-mindedness in the face of God's universal grace. Central to the satire is Jonah's portrayal as a fervent nationalist, staunchly opposed to the idea of God extending mercy and compassion beyond the bounds of his own people. His reluctance to heed God's call to preach repentance to the Assyrian city of Nineveh serves as a striking indictment of his ethnocentric worldview, highlighting the absurdity of human pride and prejudice in the face of divine sovereignty. In stark contrast to Jonah's narrow-mindedness, God is portrayed as a universalist, whose boundless compassion encompasses all nations and peoples. Through Jonah's reluctant mission to Nineveh and the subsequent repentance of its inhabitants, the narrative underscores the transformative power of God's grace to transcend cultural barriers and transform hearts, regardless of nationality or ethnicity. An iconic image that encapsulates the story is that of the great fish, which serves as a powerful symbol of divine intervention and redemption. 
the fish's role in swallowing Jonah and eventually spitting him out serves as a metaphor for God's relentless pursuit of his wayward prophet, as well as a reminder of the futility of resisting God's will. As readers journey through the satirical landscape of Jonah, they are confronted with the timeless truths of human frailty and divine mercy. Through its sharp wit and piercing insight, the narrative challenges readers to confront their own prejudices and preconceptions, while also offering a profound vision of God's boundless love and compassion for all his creation. Micah's prophetic book unfolds with a structured pattern of three alternating cycles, where oracles of judgment are meticulously balanced by oracles of redemption. This rhythmic cadence lends a sense of thematic coherence to the text, highlighting the prophet's dual message of warning and hope for the nation of Judah. In identifying himself as originating from an agricultural setting, Micah infuses his prophetic utterances with vivid imagery drawn from the rhythms of nature and the toils of farming life. This earthy imagery serves to root his message in the everyday realities of his audience, compelling them to confront the moral imperatives embedded within their communal existence. Much like his contemporary Amos, Micah directs his prophetic gaze towards the social sins that beset his society. He condemns the exploitation of the poor, the perversion of justice, and the systemic oppression that corrodes the fabric of communal life. Through his scathing indictments, Micah exposes the moral bankruptcy of a nation that has strayed from the path of righteousness. However, amidst the pronouncements of judgment, Micah also offers a message of hope and restoration for those who heed the call to repentance. His oracles of redemption envision a future where justice flows like a mighty river and where the nation is reconciled to its divine covenant with God. As readers engage with the prophetic words of Micah, they are confronted with the enduring relevance of his message for their own lives and communities. Through its blend of poetic imagery and moral insight, Micah's book challenges readers to confront the social injustices of their time and to embrace the transformative power of God's redeeming love and grace. Nahum's prophetic narrative marks a distinct departure from the pastoral imagery of Micah, delving instead into the tumultuous realm of military conflict. While Micah's focus was on the agrarian landscapes of his homeland, Nahum's gaze is fixed firmly on the grand stage of geopolitical power struggles. In a striking departure from the prophetic tradition that primarily targeted the covenant nations of Israel and Judah, Nahum's message is directed squarely at the Assyrian capital of Nineveh. This ancient metropolis, once feared for its military might and ruthless conquests, becomes the focal point of Nahum's scathing indictment of its decadence and cruelty. Notably, Nahum's prophecy of judgment against Nineveh lacks the hopeful notes of redemption that are often interspersed within prophetic literature. Instead, it unfolds as a relentless tirade against the city's arrogance and oppression, culminating in a vivid depiction of its impending destruction at the hands of divine judgment. Through Nahum's prophetic vision, readers are confronted with the sobering realities of human pride and divine justice. The prophet's vivid imagery and impassioned rhetoric serve to underscore the inevitability of Nineveh's downfall and the inescapable consequences of its sins. As readers engage with the prophetic words of Nahum, they are invited to ponder the enduring significance of his message for their own lives and societies. Through its uncompromising portrayal of divine judgment and human folly, Nahum's prophecy serves as a timeless reminder of the consequences of hubris and the inexorable workings of God's justice in the affairs of humanity. Habakkuk emerges from the prophetic lineage following the farmer prophet Micah and the warrior prophet Nahum, offering a distinctive voice that challenges the conventional narrative. Unlike his predecessors, Habakkuk dares to question the ways of God, wrestling with the complexities of divine justice in the face of human suffering and evil. Of particular renown is the final chapter of Habakkuk, where the prophet's declaration of trust in God amidst adversity serves as a stirring testament to faith in the midst of uncertainty. In this climactic moment, Habakkuk's journey from doubt to trust becomes a powerful narrative arc, resonating deeply with readers grappling with their own struggles and doubts. Central to the book of Habakkuk is the dynamic dialogue between the prophet and God, which replaces the typical oracles of judgment and redemption found in other prophetic works. Through this intimate exchange, Habakkuk articulates the doubts and questions that weigh heavily on his heart, while God responds with reassurance and insight, ultimately leading the prophet to a place of deeper understanding and trust. The book of Habakkuk challenges readers to wrestle with the complexities of faith and justice, inviting them into a profound dialogue with the divine. Through its exploration of human suffering and divine providence, it offers a timeless message of hope and trust in the midst of uncertainty, inspiring readers to cling to faith even in the darkest of times. 
Zephaniah S. prophetic message is characterized by a potent blend of judgment and redemption, echoing the traditional prophetic pattern while also carving out its unique thematic terrain. Within its concise chapters, the book delivers three weighty oracles of judgment alongside a singular oracle of redemption, offering a multifaceted exploration of divine justice and mercy. Departing from the customary pattern of detailing and condemning evil, Zephaniah's focus is primarily directed towards prophesying judgment against it. With uncompromising clarity, the prophet denounces the sins of the nation and warns of the impending consequences, painting a vivid picture of the devastation that awaits those who persist in rebellion against God's commandments. Central to Zephaniah's prophecy is the recurring motif of the Day of the Lord, a theme that permeates nearly 20 references throughout the book. This eschatological concept serves as a focal point for the prophet's message, signaling a future time of divine intervention and judgment that will ultimately vindicate God's righteousness and sovereignty. The opening declaration of Zephaniah, I will utterly sweep away everything, resonates with a tone of divine judgment and righteous indignation, setting the stage for the prophetic pronouncements that follow. Yet, amidst the impending doom, the book concludes with a stirring promise of restoration and renewal, as God pledges to restore your fortunes to his faithful remnant. As readers engage with the prophetic words of Zephaniah, they are invited to contemplate the tension between divine judgment and redemption, and to consider their own response to the call of repentance and reconciliation. Through its powerful imagery and prophetic vision, Zephaniah's prophecy continues to resonate with readers, challenging them to heed the warnings of impending judgment while embracing the hope of restoration offered through the saving grace of God. Haggai's prophecy stands apart from the traditional predictions of future exile for a covenant nation, as it directs its denunciations towards the exiles who had returned to Jerusalem following the Babylonian captivity. The focal point of condemnation is their neglect in rebuilding the temple, a symbol of Israel's covenantal commitment to God. Rather than focusing on external threats or foreign enemies, Haggai's message addresses the internal spiritual decay and apathy that had beset the returned exiles. By prioritizing their own comfort and material pursuits over the restoration of God's dwelling place, they had neglected their sacred duty and compromised their fidelity to the covenant. Central to Haggai's prophecy is the urgent call to action, urging the people to set aside their selfish pursuits and prioritize the rebuilding of the temple. Through this act of obedience and devotion, Haggai proclaims, the nation will experience a renewed sense of divine favor and blessing, leading to a future of national prosperity and spiritual flourishing. Unlike the typical poetic prophecies characterized by lofty imagery and metaphorical language, Haggai's message is conveyed in straightforward prose, reflecting the urgency and immediacy of his call to action. His words resonate with clarity and conviction, challenging his audience to confront their complacency and recommit themselves to the work of God's kingdom. As readers engage with the prophetic words of Haggai, they are confronted with the timeless challenge of balancing temporal concerns with spiritual priorities. Through his powerful exhortations and unwavering commitment to God's purposes, Haggai's prophecy continues to inspire readers to pursue faithfulness and obedience in their own lives, even amidst the distractions and temptations of the world. Zechariah, esteemed as the longest and most intricate among the twelve minor prophets, emerges as an apocalyptic masterpiece often hailed as the revelation of the Old Testament. Much like the enigmatic book of Revelation, Zechariah employs a technique known as symbolic reality, where symbols take center stage, creating a vivid and immersive world for readers to explore. Intricately woven throughout its pages, these symbols shape the narrative, offering profound insights into divine mysteries and unveiling glimpses of a future reality that transcends earthly existence. Through its visionary writing, Zechariah transports readers into the realm of the end times, where the boundaries between the temporal and the eternal blur, and the cosmic drama of redemption unfolds. At the heart of Zechariah's prophetic vision lies a profound sense of hope and expectation, as he foretells the coming of the Messiah and the establishment of God's kingdom on earth. Through a rich tapestry of imagery and allegory, the prophet paints a breathtaking portrait of the divine plan of salvation, inviting readers to contemplate the mysteries of God's redemptive purposes. Yet, amidst the grandeur of its apocalyptic imagery, Zechariah's prophecy also carries a message of warning and admonition, challenging readers to heed the call to repentance and faithfulness in preparation for the coming judgment. Through its intricate blend of symbolism and prophecy, Zechariah's work continues to captivate and inspire readers, offering profound insights into the nature of God's kingdom and the ultimate destiny of humanity. 
Malachi serves as a poignant conclusion to the Old Testament, delivering a sobering message that resonates with the spiritual and moral realities of its time. In its pages, the prophet addresses the spiritual malaise that had taken root among the priests and ordinary Jews who had returned to the homeland following the Babylonian captivity. Through a series of accusatory pronouncements, Malachi exposes the hypocrisy, complacency, and disobedience that had infiltrated the religious life of the nation. Central to Malachi's message is the motif of an imagined dialogue between God and his errant people, a literary device that lends a sense of immediacy and intimacy to the prophetic pronouncements. Through this intimate exchange, Malachi confronts the people with their transgressions, calling them to account for their failures to honor God and uphold their covenant obligations. While Malachi's prophecy predominantly delivers bad news, it also contains glimmers of hope and promise for those who heed the call to repentance and obedience. Amidst the accusations and indictments, the prophet offers a vision of restoration and renewal, envisioning a future where the hearts of the people are turned back to God and the blessings of covenant fidelity are once again experienced. As readers engage with the prophetic words of Malachi, they are confronted with the timeless challenge of faithfulness and devotion in the midst of spiritual decline and moral compromise. Through its poignant imagery and prophetic insight, Malachi's prophecy serves as a compelling call to return to the covenantal relationship with God, reminding readers of the enduring faithfulness of the one who calls them to repentance and renewal. In the Celestial Chronicles, we've journeyed through the vast landscapes of the Old Testament, exploring its rich tapestry of literary forms and timeless narratives. From the heroic sagas of Genesis to the poignant elegies of Lamentations, each book offers a unique glimpse into the human condition and our relationship with the divine. But as we delve deeper into these ancient texts, questions arise. What timeless truths can we glean from the stories of Abraham, Moses, and David? How do the prophetic visions of Isaiah and Ezekiel resonate with our modern world? And what lessons can we learn from the wisdom literature of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes? Join the Celestial Chronicles as we unravel the mysteries of the Old Testament together. Let's embark on a journey of discovery and reflection, exploring the enduring relevance of these ancient texts in our lives today. What insights will you uncover? And what questions will you bring to our discussions? Join the conversation and let your voice be heard in the Celestial Chronicles.